Hello my lovelies, how are you? I hope you are all safe and well. My name's Ellie, I'm the founder of Surrey Art School and I've been invited to do a guest tutorial for you based around colour. Uh, I know that you've all been sent some sets of watercolours and some paper uh, as part of your pack and I'd like to take you through some of the stuff that you might do with a brush and also a little bit on colour mixing. I'm not going to cover loads on this but I will cover a little bit of colour mixing too. So this is my pocket set of travel watercolours. You'll need a set of watercolours, you'll need a couple of brushes and you'll just need an open mind to take part in this tutorial. So let's get started. I'm going to open up my book and find a blank page. This book is just literally cartridge paper and I'm going to move my materials over a little bit now so I can get started on this. So this is just some heavyweight cartridge paper which I know you guys have got in your pack as well. I'm going to start with a little brush and I just want to get one colour going from my set. So I was really feeling a kind of greeny vibe. If you've got a mixing palette like me, Try and keep your warm and your cool tones separated. So your reds, your yellows, um, your oranges. Try and mix them on one side and then your blues, your greens. Keep them to the other side. So I'm just adding a little bit of water to my paint just to get it going. Now with watercolour we tend to sometimes add a little bit too uh, much colour. It should actually be quite thin. So can you see that consistency there? I'm just working with a bit of green because I've got quite a lot of green. Uh, play around with adding some water. I'm not kind of going into my palette here. I'm just adding water to that main mix and see if you can get some kind of lighter tones going first. Just so you get an idea of what the paint can do, how tr translucent it can be. Uh, either you can kind of blob like that or you can take a large kind of bit of the paint, slightly bigger brush, load it with water and then just drag. And the paint should follow suit and you should be able to see a change in the consistency or in the strength of the colour there. Okay, so now we're going to do a little bit of brush work. The brush is not just there to grab paint from here and to dump onto the page. The brush has a surface that can be quite exciting once you learn how to use it properly. So I'm going to grab a little bit of that black paint, that black? That green paint, I'm going to do a bit of mark making. Um, always useful to have a little bit of paper towel or tissue to one side. You want your brush to be damp but not soaking wet. So you can dab it off and then grab a bit more paint. And I want you to start just by pressing the back of the brush against the page and see kind of what shape the actual brush is. So you can press quite hard, push back all the way. And then obviously as it dries out a little bit, it'll get a bit scratchier, but you can work with that too. It's quite interesting. So this time I'm just going to touch the very tip. So it's looking a little bit like green rain here. Can you see it? Uh, and if I press a bit harder, my raindrops get a little bit bigger, a bit heavier. And as my paint is starting to run out, they also get a little bit lighter. So can you make some lovely little raindrops? with whatever colour you're working with. You could be working with blue, red, it's completely up to you. I've gone for green because I'm going to paint some green things in a minute, yeah? Um, again, explore here, do some mark making. If I kind of scrub with my brush like this, what kind of shape can I make? There you end up with a kind of graded shape, don't you? Um, and, you know, if I push back against my brush, in the other direction and I move a little bit quicker, what kind of marks can I make? So really fully explore mark making with your brush first. This will give you way more options when it comes to painting. Just getting an understanding of what the, br of what the brush does and what marks you can make with it first. So once you have mastered those basics, uh, I'm just gonna mix up a little bit more of that green. It's a lovely sap green, this one. If you haven't got green in your palette, a little bit of blue, a little bit of yellow, and you should be able to reach the same colour. If you want this colour a little bit lighter, add a bit of yellow to it. If you want it a bit darker, add a bit of blue, okay? So we're going to start by practising some lines. Uh, if I press really lightly with my brush, I'm going to be able to create a really thin line. And if I press a little bit harder, that line will get thicker. Yeah, so can you see how the brush 
and a splay. So I want you to practice just seeing what is the thinnest line you can make. And I'm just kind of pulling my hand down here. This is kind of the elbow that's pulling down. And see if you can create a wider mark deliberately and see if you can get your marks running a little bit thinner. See that where there's a little blob there of paint? Just make sure you knock that off first because otherwise it'll be overloaded with the brush. You won't have any control. Once you've got to grips with that, you could start maybe creating some grass. I'm working with green, so I'm thinking grass might be quite nice. And just that repetition of that same action, if you work your way from left to right, now actually, by the time you get down to this end, this end will have dried and you can add another layer over the top and then you start to get some depth. Can you see that? Where the paint has dried and a thicker paint is going on top, we start to get that sense of, you know, this grass being in the foreground and that one being in the background. Yeah. So once you've mastered grass, you're ready for the next bit. And next, we are going to have a go at creating some leaf shapes, just with the same very simple synthetic brush. It doesn't really matter how big your brush is, it's just about making sure that it still holds its point, okay? Um, so for this one, get your brush, press, and then I'm gonna get you to move sideways and twist to create a leaf shape. So down, and once it's fully down, push sideways, and then lift. Can you make that beautiful leaf shape? Press sideways and lift. Just keep practicing that action. It's really, really good to commit this to your memory now. Not just to your mind memory, but to your muscle memory. So press and lift. And then if you can do that on one side, can you do it on the other? So if I press, and I drag sideways and lift. Can I create that same leafy shape? Or if I press and pull down the middle, can I? Can I is the question, I'm not sure. That one came out a bit interesting. So press, and you almost wanna twist as you lift. Don't have to do this all in one motion, but it's quite satisfying. If you can get it to coordinate, if you can get your brush to do what you want. These start to almost look like trees, don't they? So we've got some little leaves here and then we've got almost like tree shapes here. If you've ever been somewhere like Italy, it's making me think, it's inspiring me as we go, as is often the case when I teach. If you go to somewhere like Italy, has anyone ever seen these kind of trees? If I stop there and lift, and then I just twist my brush around and I pull down, I've got almost like a herb shape, but I've also got like a tree shape, haven't I? See how I can create such a wide mark, even just with this tiny little brush. So there we go. So it's starting to build up a sense of some trees or maybe some leaves that are slightly different shape, yeah? And then one more little action I want you to practice here, and we're going to pull this all together in the second part. So again, just one colour of paint is perfectly acceptable. This will help you to get used to the consistency of the paint and to put it down with some control. The last one is this. We're just going to press and then lift. And then we're going to turn, press, lift, press, lift, press, lift, press, lift. And what you end up with is a little bit like a kind of bud, maybe the top of a top of a nettle or something like that, or a little kind of budding plant, maybe. And the whole point of all of this is just to make sure that you're using the full capacity of those bristles of that brush. You know, there's so many different marks that you can make with that brush. So we're going to move on and do a little bit of colour mixing in this next part. So just bear with me, I'm just going to turn my page over. We will leave that test page to dry. The nice thing about this though is you can come back to that at any time. So, chapter two. So I might actually need to change my water quickly, so I'm going to do that and then I will be back. Okay, so chapter two. Let's see if we can start to bring together some of the elements that we have just discovered. Now, on my way down to the studio, I picked up a few bits. They were just growing down by the side of the road, nothing that was going to have a major impact. 
Um, and I'm going to pop these alongside me just for a little bit of inspiration for this next bit. So as you can see, there's a reason why I chose green. It's because I've got an awful lot of green uh, in the stuff that I'm working with. So you want to start by putting in your centre line. Don't forget uh, your little bit of paper towel just to, so you can clean your brush. You can damp it off a little bit, get rid of the extra water before you then pop it in your paint. And we're going to start just with that practice um, that I was talking about at the beginning, which is the tapered line. Okay, So have a look at this guy here first. And from the top, pressing really lightly at the top because I want a thin line. And maybe a little bit heavier in the areas where this stem gets a bit thicker. Don't be scared to kind of wiggle this line a little bit. Yeah, so that's my core line in. Now I'm going to return to that leaf practice that I was showing you before. And maybe a little bit of mark making at the top of here actually as well. So you can see those little tiny, those little tiny fronds. At the top, those little buddy bits. I'm going to get those in next. So I've got slightly thicker paint now. And just going to dab it off a little bit with my paper towel. And I'm just going to dab to show you those bits. Yep. So I'm just pressing. The thing to remember in art is that we don't always have to tell the full picture. We just give a little hint. Uh, this one calls for a little press and lift, I think. Give a little hint of what we're aiming at and the mind puts together the rest of the picture. So here I'm just putting in those little stalks, little brush and then just dabbing with my brush to show the texture of those little buds. And again we've got another leaf there so we'll just press and lift there. I'll just do that one more time here. So really light on the pressure to begin with and then just going to press with either side of the brush to put in those little bud shapes. See, the brush shape is naturally the shape of the bud, so that's a bonus. And if you want it a little bit darker, just go back and get some pure paint from your palette. You may find that you need to get a good consistency going with your paint before you start painting, as in you need to kind of scrub at the surfaces of it a little bit just to make it a little bit thicker, especially if you want those brighter, more vibrant kind of colours. So this one is just a case of that same technique, press, 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 pull in, don't let your brush get too wet, otherwise it's going to drag. Um, and we can start to add in some of those leaves. There's a nice big leafy shape there, so I'm going to switch to a slightly larger brush for that. Because again, we want the brush to do the work. So this is slightly bigger. It's my whopper brush. What size is that? I can't remember. It's quite big anyway. And I'm going to grab a little bit of that liquid. I'll make sure it's damp first. But again, not sopping wet, not dripping wet. Uh, grab a little bit of that green. Get that going again. And then for these larger leaves, watch with this brush how easily it's done. So press. Nice and wide. I'm twisting there a little bit so I can keep that edge and if you don't quite achieve it all in one go you can always add in that jaggedy edge afterwards but it really doesn't matter kind of the size of your brush it, it is it is what you do with it folks it really is so these bigger brushes will just help you fill out the inside space a lot quicker so we're not really doing in outlines here we're doing inlines we're working with the inside space of the shape okay let's look at something slightly different I suppose with my big brush, I could show you this guy. It's got nice kind of soft rounded ends to it. Again, just a weed I picked up on my way down to the studio. And then I've got one more little trick up my sleeve, which I think really like with this greeniness. So, so this one, it's just all going to be about the shape of the brush. Bit too much water on my brush. So just press, press. Press to show the shape of those leaves. If you've got to come back and work over the top again, that is fine. But you want to get those main structures in quite light, lightly and quite loosely at the beginning. Okay. So nice, big main structures going in. And lovely things happen to watercolour when it starts to dry as well. You start to really see where how intense your paint is. And often we'll think we've painted you know enough with our watercolors we'll be like whoa that looks so bright and then actually what happens is when it dries it lightens up quite a lot so that's why you know layering your paints is quite important here so i've done all the leaf shapes first on that one and then i'm just going to go in and with the tip of my brush starting at the top i'm just going to pull that stalk through yeah 
ever so simple. Your brush is kind of, you know, lends itself so well to um, this kind of work. So one more I'm going to do for you now, and I just want to incorporate a slightly different colour because so far it's been all green. Now my name's Ellie Green, so I don't mind a bit of green. Um, so I should have here a little bit of blue. And I did say, didn't I, I'm trying to, trying to keep your, your mixing palette clear. So I'm going to go for blue. And I'm going to go for a little bit of a scarlety red. That's quite pretty. And I'm going to mix that with my blue. It's quite, quite dark and almost greeny. Let's try the other red. You have to be careful sometimes, especially when you're getting paints going for the first time. You just need to kind of test them first and see what they look like, which I hadn't done. Let's see, um, if I get this kind of scarlety red and I add a little bit of this ultramarine colour to it, I should get a lovely purple. There we go. So it really does depend which red you choose. Yeah, that's a more of a scarlety red. This is cobalt blue, I think, and this is more of a, an ultramarine, a, a Prussian blue. So it creates a much cleaner colour. Can you see where I'm going with this yet? I don't actually have any lavender in the studio because it's not out yet, but I'm going to show you a technique for lavender for when it comes out. So this time I've got purple on my brush and a press and press and press and press. And you're kind of overlapping as you go with this, overlapping your paint, overlapping your marks. And can you start to see the shape of the lavender? appearing there I hope you can so that's that and then you just from there go back to my green for a minute make sure my brush isn't overloaded and I'm just going to pull out from there and I've got myself a beautiful lavender I'll show you that one more time so that was my ultramarine paint I think no sorry that was my Prussian blue paint Nice, deep, rich blue. Oh, what a lovely colour. And then this is a kind of scarlety red, so it's quite purpley anyway, yeah. This orange red here would be no good. That's the one that made me that browny, greeny tone. So there we go, more luscious purple. Clean the brush, always when you're mixing colours. And then I'm going to pick up a bit of that purple from my palette, and I'm going to put a little friend in for this lavender. Woo! And actually my paint's a little bit stronger there, can you see? And it's a bit bolder and brighter. So you really do need to experiment with your consistency of your paint with uh, watercolours, yeah? So just adding in a few extra little touches there, but it is literally just brush words, side to side, side to side, using the shape of the brush to create those lovely sharp shapes that you'll sometimes see on the lavender. And then again, I'll go back to this kind of sappy green. And I'm going to put in just those core shapes. Now, lavender do sometimes have some other little leaves as well, some kind of longer leaves, and we'll pop some of those in just because. I'm just keeping it nice and loose. Yep. But there'll quite often be a fair few of those, I would say. Up, working the way up there we go so I've worked mostly with kind of greens and purples here I'm going to do you one more just as an example before I finish and again only because it kind of covers the same kind of brush technique so let me just show you how to um, mix a decent green just in case you haven't got one in your palette and then I'm going to show you how to do a fern as my last offering for this little tutorial so um, you know when I was learning about paint at school. Nobody took the time to sit down and explain to me how to work with watercolours properly or how to work with a brush. And it's amazing once you have a few tricks like that up your sleeve, how much more able it makes you feel. So I've gone for this deep, this dark Prussian-y blue again. And I'm going to add a little bit of yellow into that. So this is a lemony yellow, which is a similar, it's a cool tone the same as that blue is a cool tone. So there's your warm yellow. That's for making bright colours, oranges. And this is my cool yellow, my ye lemon yellow. And I'm going to mix that with that Prussian blue to make a slightly deeper green. I've got a kind of sappy green here. And green, actually, believe it or not, it's quite hard 
to mix a realistic color of green. I'm just adding a little bit more into that as we go along. So it's it's not the easiest color to mix. It can actually be quite challenging, right? Just wanted to show you how to get to the color just in case you've forgotten your color wheel, how you get to the color. And if I want that color to be darker, I add more blue. If I want it to be lighter, I add more yellow, or you can just water it down. And then I'm gonna have a crack at doing the stem of this fern. So again, make sure your brush isn't overloaded. I've just, I've just mixed my paint, so I'll just dab my brush off. And then here we go, I'm gonna put that line of the fern. And I've just turned my brush and pressing a little bit harder at the base because the stalk does actually get a little bit wider there. So once I've done that, you don't have to put every single little frond of the fern on, all right? Just, you know, simplify a little bit if you need to, but I'm gonna put in the kind of core shapes that I can see to begin with, because after that, it means I just need to add, or should I say that's where the fern starts? I just need to add um, the shapes onto my fern. So. Again, I've got my colour mixed. I've gone for a slightly kind of middle, middling, more middling green now. And just going to press and lift, press and lift, press and lift, press and lift. And what I'm doing is I'm creating those kind of, kind of curvy edges of the fern. So it's the brush that does all the work. Imagine if you had to draw each of these out individually, draw an outline and then color them in. It would be really hard. If you just use that back of the brush, and I'm not pressing with the whole brush here because these, especially the ones at the end of the fern, they're actually quite short. And notice how they take, they kind of curve off as well. So you need to change the angle of your hand when you're doing this to suit the curve, but it is ever so satisfying just following it around. It is ever so satisfying to do once you get into it. Now, sometimes these kind of repetitive, some might say laborious kind of tasks, I find the most calming. I've got my structure, got my skeleton, and then I'm just repeating that technique, but just being observant of each individual little frond that's sticking out just because, you know, there are some variations in nature. So I'm giving it a bit of a rub because I don't want them to come out too pointy. If I just press like that, that's quite sharp. And actually, if you look at them, they're kind of curvy, aren't they? So you're just gonna work your way around, all the way around. Too much water on my brush there, did you see it? All the way around, slowly but surely. So I've tried to pick things for this tutorial which are easily available, i.e. weeds, as I'm just driving around. And again, the ferns are just starting to come out now. Um, so there's lots of those around if you want to have a practice with that technique. And I would love to hear from you. I'd love to hear how you're getting on. So you'll see at the end of this video, a little bit of information about me and how to contact me. And I'd just like to thank you all for inviting me to... Um, guest tutor for you. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this and please do let me know if you'd like to hear anything else from me. Thank you so much. Take care out there.